Hello and welcome to the Philippines. Uh, welcome to the world, the world of data. So much data available out here. Uh, so many sites with, uh, with interesting data information. Uh, one thing about data, you really need to ask, your que ask the question, what is it telling us? What is it telling us? Not just numbers. And uh, I'm going to go a little deeper with some of the numbers. Uh, there's a lot of interesting information, uh, a lot of information about the Philippines, and a little bit of information about uh, the rest of the world as well. Some information about uh, percentages of uh, population that are testing uh, positive. And uh, anyway, let's get into it. One thing very few people are talking about, and you, you really got to wonder why, is uh, prevention. What can you do to stay healthy to prevent uh, having this or other viruses? And uh, just a ton of information out there about vitamin D. I pulled this screen grab from a site, Ivor Cummins, and he's done studies, written books. There's lots of data that the people who are deficient in vitamin D have much more severe cases of this and uh, get it from the sun. Uh, younger people get it much better from the sun. Lighter skinned people get it much better from the sun. The darker you are, the less efficient you are at turning sunlight into vitamin D. The older you are, the less efficient you are. If you get it from a pill, you can get it from uh, fish oil. You can get it from other vitamin D3 pills. And uh, one doctor, Dr. William Davis, has done a lot of work with this. He suggests you get it from an oil-based pill instead of a solid tablet. He says it's absorbed much better. Also eat mackerel, oily fish, mackerel, uh, sardines, salmon. I walked by this place the other day, walking to Ayala Mall in Cebu City, and went in and inquired. And they said 1,200 for the test. You could check back in three to four hours to get the results. Uh, the big question is, what if you have a t positive test? What happens? And they didn't know the answer. They had to go and ask some other people. And uh, they would report that to the uh, health department here in Cebu City, and then the health department would contact the barangay, decide whether to quarantine you at home or in some facility, I guess. This is a chart I will get into a little more in depth a little bit later, but interesting, it shows a positivity rate of 6.9% of those uh, tested, which is pretty interesting. All right, first let's jump over to Worldometer. Worldometer, very interesting site. Not as pretty as a couple of sites like John Hopkins University site. Uh, much more color to it, but uh, I find this much easier to read. Gives an awful lot of information uh, very quickly. Um, later we'll bounce over real quickly up here to the coronavirus updates. And you also have population up here that you can check on area of the world or a key into different countries. Anyway, we're at uh, uh, just below 8 million worldwide population. And look at that grow, burst this year and uh, net population growth today and so far this year an extra 39 million people in the world already this year uh, deaths this year 28 million and counting 8 million by 2023 9 billion by 2037 10 billion by 2055 uh, i have uh, I've seen some information projecting 11 to 12 billion before it starts going back down again. Uh, lots of inter interesting information down here. Um, food undernourished people in the world. Now this is going to go up substantially uh, because of the current because of the current economic uh, worldwide shutdown and uh, people who died of hunger today this year. I project will go up substantially in the coming months because of the present economic situation. Deaths caused by water-related diseases, 407, almost getting close to half a million people uh, so far this year, probably half a million people by the end of the year. Energy, information here, uh, diseases, very interesting, communicable disease deaths this year. 
over 6 million. Will it hit 7 million? Seasonal flu deaths this year so far, 235,000 so far. Uh, I think it goes anywhere from uh, anywhere from 250,000 up to 600,000 a year, depending on how bad the flu rate is. Children, abortions, uh, HIV, AIDS, infected, uh, 41 million, I didn't know that. Deaths caused by AIDS this year, um, by the end of the year, probably about a million. Deaths caused by cancer this year already, almost four million. Malaria, close to half a million, so it'll be over half a million. All right, coronavirus cases and deaths. And uh, to find out what's happening, uh, 485, 160, divided by 9, 533, that equals uh, 0.050%. So keep that in mind. That that is the the percentages for countries bounce around a little bit, but uh, that's not too far off from an average for many countries. So let's scroll down here. Recovered uh, active cases, closed cases. Uh, uh, chart there which is interesting daily deaths are dropping uh, good news is they've got some uh, some new uh, new inexpensive medicine to help decrease the uh, deaths apparently substantially I've watched several uh, medical interviews and discussions about dexamethasone and it seems that people who are on the ventilators people are in really bad shape it reduces the uh, by one third reduces the uh, deaths. Seems to help those on oxygen just a little bit, but not nearly as much. And to come across this information from several people commenting on uh, on another medical site, and uh, here's the website up here, COVID19CriticalCare.com, uh, the FLCCC Working Group, and uh, got some interesting information down here, even including down here a link. Uh, dexamethasone improves survival. Our experts recommend uh, this one instead as superior. Read why here. If you're interested, check that site out. Uh, lots of good information there. And, uh, you know, if I was being admitted to the hospital, if I had this virus, some other deal, I would want to know a little bit about the, you know, I don't know if you'd have any influence on the doctors, the hospitals, what type of program. Uh, some of the hospitals, I think, from what I've read, uh, will try to get you signed up for trials. You may be put on a new drug or a new vaccine trial or a placebo. Uh, if there was something like this that actually worked and was cheap, I might, I might kind of try to influence that decision. Worth it checking it out. And if you click that link there, it takes you over to this page and worth checking it out here. If I was a physician, would I appreciate my patients uh, giving me advice on how I should treat their particular situation? Probably not. But uh, anyway, it's in this day and age, you know, the, the poor doctors, they've got all these people that are on the Internet researching their cases. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good to be aware of your choices anyway. Especially ones like this that apparently are relatively inexpensive. And uh, there was a lot of good comments about the procedures as well. You may be asked to uh, sign up, see if you'll sign up for a trial of some of the trial vaccines. And you may be given a, a vaccine or a placebo. Uh, would you want to go through that? I've, I've been a couple times between my jobs over the years, many years ago. I've been involved in medical trials, come in on a weekend, spend a couple days at a medical facility. Uh, one was for eye drops. And, uh, you know, at the end of the deal, you make $1,000, $2,000. Uh, come back every every weekend, that type of thing. But if you're in the hospital with a disease like this, um, you know, those are options. You can, you can go in for a trial, possibly get a placebo, 
or you can opt for perhaps that you would be given the choice to opt for some treatment like this if they are aware of it if they are aware of it let's jump over to the Republic of the Philippines Department of Health site there's quite a bit of interesting information here uh, more than I was expecting I got uh, different uh, things you can key into here to find out anyway we're on the uh, the case tracker site and looks like I can view this in full screen if I want to but anyway I'm keyed in here I've got it uh, at the uh, higher resolution you can filter this information by region or by province I guess but anyway if you take the the deaths 1204 divide by the cases uh, tested so far and you get 0 0.037 substantially lower percentage wise death rate than the world average I'll tell you a story about one case I'm familiar with uh, a friend of my a relative my girlfriend uh, here in a little bit but anyway let's go down here and you can you can check in and get additional information it looks like this is a seven day moving average and here's the graph um, looks like it's taking a pretty good going in the right direction anyway and a lot of this a lot of the growth of course is that over the last three months they've been they started from almost zero ability to do testing up to adding and doing there's some information here about how many tests they're doing now how many are available and here it has cases broken down by top regions and provinces and Cebu City is is in uh, we are the city itself is in a more strict lockdown right now because of the higher cases and that a lot of that has to do with the uh, testing so many more people of course and I'll talk a little more about that here as we get down in here uh, samples tested daily individuals tested interesting so so see as you test more people obviously uh, you're going to get more positive this is the positive cases individuals uh, 674 that particular day out of 11,596 tested uh, so uh, we'll look at this what is the positivity rate very interesting number and uh, this is some of the information. I think part of this is because it uh, started way up here 20% and could have something to do with the tests that they, that they were using. These spikes could be the days, a couple of days in which they did many more tests than other days, of course. And positivity rate of 6.9%. So let's, let's take that number. Uh, population of the Philippines 110 million people let's just take 50 million people 50 million times 6.9 percent uh, if 6.9 percent of the population is positive that would mean 3 million 450 thousand people just based on that rate and I was basing that on 50 million people, not 110 million people. 6.9% uh, of course of 100 million people would be 6,900,000, almost 700, 7 million people. Um, so many points have been being made here uh, over, over the course of the last couple of months is that uh, many people are quite positive that the virus started quite a bit earlier than what it was originally uh, said to in in late in the winter of 2019 and that spread much much quickly much more quickly uh, with uh, especially if it came out of China as it probably did uh, with Chinese with over a billion people traveling all over the world of course very easy for with worldwide travel uh, for that to spread very quickly so there's a very good chance that a huge number of people have been infected for many many months already uh, and we're just now with the testing just now starting to scratch the surface uh, the, 
part of the problem with the headlines is that all you saw, that's all you see. A uh, hundred new, a hundred new cases, fifty new cases, whatever, whatever the case may be, and uh, can throw panic into so many people. Anyway, I've had a number of people comment about the facilities here in the cities. I think they are getting uh, pretty close to the full mark, but. Uh, Here's some information about occupancy rate here in uh, the Philippines. The ICU beds, the isolation beds, and the ward beds. They're the darker color on the on the right side is the occupied beds and the vacant beds, the lighter color. So nationwide, there's quite a bit of capability yet. There's also a number of facilities here in Cebu City and other cities they've set up in uh, in auditoriums, in schools, so they have beds available. They have doctors available to go to those areas. Uh, the Philippines uh, does not have an overabundance of doctors and nurses per patient. Uh, in fact, they've been lacking long before this virus came along. Uh, so they are stretched. They're doing heroic, heroic work, obviously. They're out there on the front lines and certainly wish them health and all the best of luck. The best thing that we can do is stay out of the hospital, stay healthy. Uh, Dr. John Campbell, I believe it here, has a YouTube channel. Lots of good information. Talks about uh, many, many factors. Interviews a lot of good people. Vitamin D is a very critical element. Uh, one study in Indonesia, almost 99% of patients with uh, vitamin D deficiency below 20 m uh, per million died. Those who are not healthy obviously should be especially careful if you have any of those core morbidities. Uh, lots of good information online. I'll give you links to a lot of those uh, a little later. And uh, anyway, how did that get in there? 214,000 lockdown babies born next year in the Philippines. And here we go to the chart. Very simple to read, not as pretty as couple of uh, sites I've been on, but much easier to read. Lots of information here. So USA, uh, you go across here and uh, there again, let's do the one, one, two, four, two, eight, two divided by 0 0.050. 0. So right in line with the world, uh, with the uh, world averages total recovered active case critical cases and uh, total cases per million that's important deaths per million this is an important figure total tests uh, tests per 1 million population important number and population of the country very interesting information and it appears that most of the deaths are happening in uh, with people, people with comorbidities. So you're, you've already got some metabolic uh, uh, health issues, um, diabetes, heart issues, um, lung issues, a number of other. You've already had some cancers. We'll look at a couple of countries very quickly. Brazil is in the news a lot about how bad it is there, the cases. And yet you look at the uh, the Per the death rate and it's uh, 0 0.045 so it's a lower percentage than the world average the rate of deaths percent of deaths uh, per cases so far uh, go down here to Mexico and you divide divide the deaths by the uh, total cases and you get 0.123 so over twice the percentage death rate in Mexico as in the US and the world in general. Uh, why is that? Because of the dense population? Is it because of the uh, health care system isn't set up for it? Not sure what the reasons are. Uh, but anyway, let's go down here. Canada. Canada, take this death, the total deaths divided by total cases, and you get a percentage of 0.08 Two, so substantially higher than the U.S. numbers percentage-wise. Could it be that uh, at their higher latitude that uh, they're getting less sun, less vitamin D? Very possibly. There's a lot of data out there about uh, B12, 
being low on vitamin D and the severity of these cases. Now let's go down to the Philippines. Philippines has get, been getting some bad press about this. And uh, let's take the number of deaths divided by the total cases, come up with a percent of 0 0.037. 0 0.05 is the world average. 0 0.05 is uh, about the average in the USA. So uh, substantially lower than the US death rate and the average world death rate. A couple of interesting total tests given. Uh, the uh, test per 1 million population, very important. Just bounce down here to Switzerland and you divide the deaths by the tests. They've given an awful lot of tests out and uh, they're at 0.06%, so higher than the world average as well. There again, might be uh, sun and vitamin D may be a factor there. Uh, age can be a factor, comorbidities can be a factor. Panama surprised me, 547 deaths, 28,000 cases comes in at 0 0.019, uh, so under 2% there. Sweden has been in the news a lot. So Sweden at uh, 5,209 deaths, and this divide that, you get 0 0.08. So it's above the worldwide average of 0 0.05. And they did uh, very little in the way of lockdowns. Uh, I think their schools remained open. And uh, it is higher, a lot of debate about that situation, they have admitted that uh, they have very large nursing homes, homes for the old people, the old sick people. And uh, the deaths got out of hand big time. I think a lot of the deaths happened in, in just uh, a couple of those huge uh, nursing homes there in the Sweden. Australia, 104 deaths and uh, out of 7,558 7, cases. And looks like they've been, did, been doing quite a few tests here. So that they come in very low death rate, uh, 0 0.01, very low uh, death rate there. Uh, they've gone in, going into their winter season. Most flus and viruses uh, tend to spread in the winter time. So hopefully they will hold that and not start increasing. Thailand also comes in very low, 58 deaths, 31, 58 cases at 0 0.018 so very low similar similar to Australia right now New Zealand also 22 deaths 1519 uh, divide those and you get uh, 0 0.014 so very low Taiwan here very low as well 7 divided by 446 is 0 0.015 Vietnam does not list the deaths here. I think I've seen so, I've seen some numbers, and uh, you know the numbers are only as good as they are accurate. So that's important, and also how accurate the tests being used in those countries. Cambodia here doesn't list any deaths, and uh, you wonder about that because they have a huge number of uh, Chinese tourists there, and uh, you would think that. Uh, that some of those would have brought uh, brought the virus in. Now for resources, there are a ton of them online, and uh, there there I found some good ones. I'm just going to give you a few of them. Medcram.com. They also have a YouTube channel, Medical Topics Explained Clearly by World Class Doctors and Instructors, and some of it uh, some of it gets a little deep. Others uh, it makes uh, uh, make complicated complicated things much simpler, so it's worth a listen. Dr. Bean Medical Lectures, there again, uh, some of it can get a little deep, but a lot of it, uh, he simplifies it so that you can understand it, worth a listen. Ivor Cummins, one of my favorite, does a lot of interviews with uh, some really interesting people discussing uh, this virus and many other uh, medical type issues. Ivor Cummings, the name down in the bottom, his website, uh, goes by Fat Emperor, I guess, but Ivor Cummings is the uh, YouTube channel. Unheard. Uh, they've got a, a, a website, I think, dot .com and a YouTube channel, Unheard. 
U-N-H-E-R-D up in the upper right hand corner there. Uh, lots of good interviews and discussions on the medical issues as well as other issues. Very interesting channel. One of my absolute favorites. Dr. William Davis provides a lot of uh, excellent medical advice, written many books. There are many others, and I had a, lo a lo much longer list of things to talk about, including masks, wearing masks, including uh, vaccine, including uh, several other issues uh, concerning this topic. But uh, 25 minutes, that's long enough. So thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time.